Um, Kunia was asking, how do we how do we build UTM tracking in CPaaS? That's a very good question because um, for those who are new, CPaaS is a feature for Shopee and Lazada sellers, or as long as you're selling on some e-commerce marketplaces like Shopee and Lazada, if you reach a certain level, you'll be offered um, the CPaaS access, which is effectively what they will do is, let's say, for example, if you sell on Shopee, right? When you get CPaaS access, what Shopee will do is they will create a product catalog based on all the products that you have in your Shopee store and share it to your Facebook ads account. So what you will get, okay? You will then able to do some retargeting and different kind of advertising to retarget people who visited your Shopee store or specific product but did not purchase. So that's a very beautiful way to do this because essentially if you sell on Shopee or Lazada, Okay, the challenge here is that you won't be able to effectively retarget people who see your store, visit your product and all that because you don't have any access to their analy I mean, the pixel or the, you know, um, you know, mobile apps SDK. So that's the biggest gap ever. So when you have CPaaS, it's very, very beautiful. So, you know, talking about UTM tracking, UTM tracking is very important when you're running ads on Facebook, especially if you're running some slightly more complex campaign. So... I'm just going to quickly go over and see how you actually do your UTM tracking on CPaaS. So I'm just going to come over here. So this is um, an ad account with CPaaS access. Okay, so all you do here is when you create an account, then you select your product set, you know, when it comes to the ad part. So I I'm just going to jump right into that. So if this is new to you, you have no idea what the hell is this, right? doesn't matter. We're just going to go over and see what we can do on this thing. So basically, when we go down here, Okay, so uh, once you've set up your account, then they will say that, you know, you can actually set up, the, this is the actually ad creation panel where you'll be looking at, you know, either you want to go slideshow, or you want to use the whole catalog and whatnot. Now, here is the where you can actually build a URL parameter. So this is effectively the UTM tracking mechanism that you can build right inside Facebook itself. So what I would strongly recommend here is, you know, you can actually come down here. This is the update. Okay, so basically uh, all you do here is, I, I mean, this is actually the URL parameter for the see more URL, which is the final link that you put on the site. But the here, over here, what I want to say here is that when you come in here, and then if you do this, uh, you know, in the tracking site, you know, I would strongly recommend that you build a URL parameter. So very simple, okay? Um, there is no carve on the stone kind of uh, methodology on how to do this right. But what I would say here is you need to actually build something that you can understand yourself. So um, usually we do campaign source, which is this is somewhere coming from. You can actually directly draw from the campaign name or ad set name. So it's very easy to build this thing. So I would say usually um, source is unless you have um, you know, a very complex campaign where you're actually driving traffic from multiple sources. So you can actually go by maybe, of course, you can you want to put in this. You can actually put Facebook. OK, um, yeah, sorry. What happened to this? So I'll do Facebook, right? So if you have multiple one, then this is a campaign source is one. Medium is you either want to do, uh, you can actually go by placement. You know, you can actually understand. It's up to you, like I say. Whether you want to go by ad set name, you know, the, the ad name, or you want to go by placement, the site, or and all that. But in terms of medium, I would say it's quite important that we do the placement part whereby you will see whether this ad is actually, I mean, the click is coming from IG or Facebook or whatnot, right? So that's how we do that. And then the campaign name is entirely up to you, but you can go by maybe the ad set name or the ad name, something like that. I would do maybe ad set name because that's the campaign name. And then after that, the campaign content, we will go by the ad name. That will give you a better idea about what's going to happen. But nonetheless, when it comes to CPaaS, as you can see here, it may not be as straightforward as it is. It says that, you know, we'll send the name provider for your campaign ad set, you know, first published. So probably over here, you know, you can actually do like, I'm not sure um product you know source um at id maybe you can go by the ad set name but as you can see here you won't be able to really effectively drill down to the product that they are clicking theoretically but nonetheless um i have not touched this part of execution for a while so i would strongly recommend that you go back and really put some tests and all that on your own and see how it works okay but nonetheless that's how you build a utm you don't need to go out and use whatever tool out there to build the UTN anymore because it's very easy and straightforward coming over here. So that's how we do that.